Right, welcome back to the channel. Today I am filming at Northup Golf Club, about to start my round of golf, and uh, I've got a question to ask myself, really. And that question is quite simply, why are my favourite golf clubs still not in my bag? You see, the thing is, if you're a keen and avid follower of the channel, you'll know that earlier on this year, I came very close to changing my irons into Mizuno Pro. They eventually sort of uh, held on and recently swapped up to, uh, well, the updated versions of my PXG, a mixture of players and T-irons. But did I make a mistake? Okay, so ultimately the answer to that question, well, it's no. I'm more than happy with the irons that I ended up with. I made the right decision, but if you're a long-term avid fan of this channel, you'll also know there's another set of irons that continually creep into my mind. I pick them up every now and again, and I really do question, well, they might ultimately seem to be right amongst my favorite irons, but for whatever reason, they never get into my bag. That's a great six iron hand. I do like these irons. But you see, as much as I love these irons, there's still one thing that's sort of one minor issue, I suppose, and I reckon that's largely down to maybe nostalgia, maybe even sentiment. You see, when I grew up, the clubs that I learned to play golf with, well, they were, they were blades. There was no choice. It was blade or blade. And in situations like this, well, uh, you had to manufacture shots because you didn't have many wedges either. Kick on, kick on. And when you didn't get a ball out the middle of those blades, well, uh, you certainly knew about it. You knew when you'd hit a bad shot. There was no getting away with things. Right, birdie. Roll out ball. But you see, the thing is, my PXG irons, they've got, in the words of, uh, well, in the words of Bob himself, they've got the sweet spot the size of Texas, and no matter where I hit them on the club face, pretty much nothing has a drop off. So I'm not losing any performance from my poor strike, if you like. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And I know some of you, you think it's a bad thing. Right, don't make me eat my words. Well, it didn't eat me words. It wasn't a great shot. And it did exactly what, so it was right on cue in many ways. Again, I ain't striking the ball great in this video. That came off the bottom grooves, but it did exactly what I've just tried to explain. And the question is, I suppose, what would have happened if I would have hit that same sort of strike with a blade in hand? It's questionable, isn't it? But with all these videos that I try to post, there is always a but. And yeah, there's a but in this one as well. And that but is a simple question by using golf clubs that help you in such a way that you get away with bad shots. Is that not helping you improve your game? So I've got a blade in hand right now. I'm pretty much saying I've got to find the center spot, otherwise I'm going to be punished. So therefore, I'm going to improve my game if I'm going to get good with these things. Oh, that is right on the flag end. Get up. That was out the middle. So how many of you feel that, uh, well, the statement I've just made, it's an element of almost, well, cheating yourself, I suppose. You're certainly not cheating playing golf, but by making it easy, have you decided to opt away from those? I know over the years I've seen plenty of comments where some of you, some of you even practice with blades on the idea that it'll improve your, uh, your ability and strike. And when you go into your sort of regular irons, your, uh, the ones you game, the ones you play in competition, you find that is a useful help. So comments down below, the theory behind playing with blades makes you a better player or practicing with blades perhaps makes you a better player. I'd be interested to know. I'd also like to get a birdie. We're gonna get one. So in today's video, we're gonna put that theory to the test and I'm gonna play, I've got the five, seven and nine iron in the P7MBs and I've got their equivalent lofts, which is a wedge eight and six iron in the PXG Gen 5s. And what I wanna see is when I hit some shots side by side, what is the real difference in terms of performance out here? Okay, so let's uh, start that comparison off with perhaps the toughest um, element and the bit where you'd expect to see the major difference through, that's a long end. So I've got five iron in a P7MB, 
I'll play the six iron, which is equivalent loft. I think there's one degree difference um, between the two. But this is where, like I said, you're faced with a real blade-like looking club. And uh, perhaps at this end of the bag, you want them to see visually that more mass and bulk. But what does it do in terms of performance out here on the golf course? Right, let's concentrate a little while. I've just leaked it out down the right a tad. We've got a nice bounce back into the fairway. There's certainly a camber from right to left, but that went okay. Decent enough strike, like I said, perhaps a little bit tentative and leaked it a little. So we'll go to the six iron. We'll play from exactly the same position and we'll just see what kind of difference. Now all of a sudden, mentality wise, like I said, this is why these are in the bag, I suppose. I'm thinking that these are gonna help me a bit more. Am I right or wrong? Well, that's a very similar line. Not as good of a strike, slightly off the bottom. And it'll be interesting to see where those two have finished. And I've got a feeling they're not too far different. Okay, so you can see interestingly just how little separated those two. We're just gonna move to the forward ball because we've sort of got 145 in now. That's right on the number with my um, at the top end of my wedge shot. So we're going to be pitching wedge in the um, in the PXG and that's a nine aisle equivalent. So in theory, we're perhaps a little bit short coming up here. Bit of a hanging lie, but all the same, like classic look again, as soon as you look down, you're thinking, right, this is a golf club I've got in hand right now. It looks beautiful, the P7 MB. But again, it's not offering me a lot of confidence. With that strike, that's what gives me the confidence and that's right on it. If it's got the legs, this could almost go in. <laughs> wow, okay, so that's a really good effort. Well, first of all, we've got to make sure that monopod stands over. We've got a bit of breeze here. Anyway, we're going to bring that down to the kind of, uh, hopefully we're in shot there, to where we were at with that uh, club. Now, the issue is, again, we've just got that kind of bit more bulk and mass. So uh, exactly what I explained. We're looking at confidence-wise from that five iron, right. That's a higher launching ball, bit more meat on it, slightly down the left hand side. And I said a bit more meat on it, it launched higher, the ball flight was slightly different and what that meant was it just held a little bit. So if anything, I would suggest that the P7MB has just traveled that little bit further, but we'll go and have a closer look. Right, so we're in a situation where arguably now, the sort of favour would turn or lean towards that uh, the finesse of the P7 MB. So uh, I've got nine iron in hand. Looks beautiful. Looks like uh, you know I'm not going to get that flyer that sometimes is suggested that comes off those players' distance irons. So uh, let's see in this situation which one might be for the best. Oh, it's beautiful the way it picks it up. It feel. I was going to hold my breath for a minute because I felt like that was going to go in. It feels really good off the face and it feels like I'm playing a kind of bladed, um, a, a blade club, like I said, that I've got plenty of control over. But how does it feel? What is the difference now when I go to, uh, well, this is a wedge with the PXG club. Like I said, again, more bulk. That feels really good as well. I can't argue again with just how good they've made these feel. And I'll be honest with you, from that position with that flag there, I'd take any of those. When you play a forged club, a pure forged club, up against a hollow bodied forged club, that's when you start to notice just those little differences in terms of sound and feel. I've said on numerous occasions, PXG do an incredible job of getting that so much like that pure forged feel. But like I said, out here in reality, when you've got those two pure forged, hollow bodied forged, you can still feel and sound that slight bit of difference that leans you towards that proper forged iron. But arguably, when you do manage to find the center of that club face with a pure forged blade, well, there's no better feeling in the game of golf, in my opinion. Also, I think it's worth pointing out that uh, my videos are to ask questions that uh, are posed by, that I think you as an audience might be asking yourself from time to time. So don't get confused with this is all about me and my dilemma. My irons will stay in the bag. I'm not looking to change. 
But I might have to get myself a set of second hand blades, I think, to uh, quench the thirst. So the two shots you're watching me play now, well, again, arguably finished in the end, no difference at all. You can see that I went into, uh, well, two different bunkers, the one I'm stood in right now and the one slightly to the right of me. But either way, both came out the rough. Pretty similar, to be fair. Right, let's see if we can get this one close. Is it down? Yep, we're happy with that. Right, the next two shots you're gonna see are from the previous hole I've just played, uh, five iron, six iron respectively. Both again did very, very similar things. I leaked them slightly out to the right, but in terms of the distance they traveled, you can see here, very little split them at all. And then I played two, well, a seven iron and an eight iron in from just shy of 150. And again, really decent strikes with both of these. Interesting enough, the seven iron had the higher ball flight. Um, and held a little bit in the wind one just about cleared the bunker and one left me where you can see so not great results but interestingly enough nothing to separate them in terms of distance there the one thing i've really seen is obviously even though the loft is the same this is a bit that interests me slightly higher ball flight if anything coming from uh, the p7 mbs so i'm going to finish things up going to hit one last shot off the turf here uh, ninth hole and at two five irons and then i'll give you what my opinion is but maybe you've already drawn your own conclusions to the way you see this one has gone i need to finish off with two really good strikes with both of these Right, so we finished this video off with, uh, well, it was a wedge and a 99 into the green behind me. And uh, interesting enough, it was the, uh, well, it was the Taylor May Club that ended up being close. But again, nothing to split them, to be quite honest with you. And probably, like I said, my favourite clubs don't get in my bag and why. And the, the, the real answer is, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's a fear factor more than anything. It's moving over to a blade, going sort of back in time, if you like. And I think also the kind of... Um, almost a message that's sent out by manufacturers that, well, they tell me that I'm not good enough to use blades anymore in terms of that's kind of, you know, lower single figure player. So again, it's all about the mental side of the game that tends you to sway you away from. And what I've actually seen in reality here today is that when you, when you get loft for loft, and I was gonna say when you're hitting out the middle, but to be honest with you, even some of the balls that I got out of the bottom grooves um, on the MB still did incredibly well. And I think that's where technology has changed significantly is that when you get an MB that is still managing to um, perform as well as they did, then that's pretty impressive to be honest with you. So, like I said at the beginning, the whole idea of this video is to pose, or my channel full stop is to pose questions. Um, not always provide answers in this case, it was kind of, uh, I'm not really sure what we got to in the end, but a real interesting video for me personally, and the performance of the two, well it was, it was as good as the person that uh, put the swing on the end of them, I think. Anyway, as ever, thanks for watching. Give me your feedback. As you can see, I'm a little bit baffled by the results, so uh, maybe you can shed some light and see what you think. Thanks for watching. See you all soon.